I'm here today with a friend of mine, Anthony, who I've met a couple months ago and uh, came here from where, LA? Yeah. LA area ish. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I've gotten to know Anthony a little bit and just really grateful that he's uh, been willing and able to sit down and share his story with us. So before we get started, uh, I'd like to go ahead and just uh, start us off in prayer and then we'll go ahead and get going. Mm -hmm. So Heavenly Father, we uh, come to you right now and just uh, pray for Anthony and his his sobriety and his uh, road to recovery, Lord, just be with him and watch over him. And Lord, just bless our time together uh, sharing his testimony. We pray that whatever is shared here today, that somebody will hear this podcast or watch this uh, video on YouTube and uh, hear something that um, uh, speaks to them. And maybe that person will want to get sober or um, feel a, a sense of, of, of kinship to the story and uh, maybe this will be an opportunity for that person to come to the Lord and ask for help. So, Lord, we just ask for you to do your work through Anthony's uh, message and uh, his testimony, Lord. So just be with us, watch over us, and we pray these things in your son's name, in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, okay, so that's uh, well, just a little bit about yourself. So where were you born and raised? Uh, I'm from Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Yeah, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, so, and uh, I've been in Orange County for the past five years. Okay. Five and a half years, yeah. So mom, dad? Together, they're still together. Still together. Yeah, 37 awesome. years. Wow, brother yeah. or sister? I'm the oldest of three. Oldest of three? Two little sisters. Now do they still live in Pennsylvania? Yeah, everybody. Everybody yeah. but you? Yeah. And what brought you out here? Treatment. Treatment, Orange okay. County. So let's, so before we get into that, because that's obviously where we're gonna go, but, um, so tell us a little bit about your childhood. How, what was your upbringing like? Um, I had a, Good childhood. Yeah. Um, I played hockey my whole life. Um, I had everything that I needed and pretty much everything I wanted, you know? Um, like I said, my parents were still together. Uh, big family, big big Italian family. They, like, um, they're all pretty tight. Mm. Both my parents are one of five. Um, what is that? Both of my parents are one of five. There's five. One of five, oh, I see, okay. You know, um, yeah, so big, Tight family. We were Catholic when I was younger, but then my parents uh, converted to Christian. So, like, my mom told Danny the other day that she's been going to Calvary Chapel, Philadelphia for 33 years or something. Nice. Yeah. Nice. How so, long? 33 years. Yeah. So, my family, we go to Calvary, too. So, we're, we're a Calvary family as well. Yeah. So, that's awesome. Yeah, Calvary's cool. Calvary is cool. Yeah. yeah they're I, very cool. And uh, I've gone, I, you know, I went to church pretty much my whole life Okay. Um, when I was younger. You know, um, so I grew up with God in my life. Cool. Um, yeah, it's good. I guess I didn't, I had a hard time with it a little bit um, growing up. I questioned a lot of things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always gone to church and I've always had God in my life. Sure. So it's good, you know. Cool. It helps. It helps a lot. Um, my mom always would be, you know, telling me, read the Bible and just, you know, accept God in my life and all that, you know? Sure. So I've been, I, I was saved when I was like 15. Okay. You know? Okay. So. That's good. Yeah. So, so about what time in your life did you start to kind of drift off a little bit, get into using of whatever it is that you decided to well, use Well, I, first? I didn't even start smoking pot until I graduated high school. Oh, okay. Because I was, so I got into it late. So were you a pretty good student? Average. Average. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If I tried, I would do good. But, but you weren't. You weren't like the. You weren't no. like the class clown or like the. You, no. Uh, or and I like and I and I was. I got along with everybody. Okay. Never had a problem with friends. Cool. You know. Yeah. Um. So about after high school, you started smoking a little bit of pot. Yeah. And every day. Like, every then, day. Then it started being every day. Okay. Drinking on you know my friends on the weekends and stuff. Yeah. Um. Were you working or? Oh yeah, I started working when I was. 14 at a uh, a restaurant okay. um a breakfast place oh okay so you oh, so you know so you know stranger to work then no i've worked my whole life okay pretty much yeah you know um yeah and then i worked at a uh, a car dealership when i was 18. actually when i was in high school in 10th grade i was on the work program so 10th 11th and 12th i went to first period second period and then i would leave to go mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. you know 
So my dad works at um, a really big dealership back home, car dealership. He sells cars still. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when I was 18, I started working there, the same dealership. I worked there for eight years. Cool. Yeah. Pretty good at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I know. I worked. I started as a lot kid, like just parking the cars and sure. helping the salesman and doing all that running around stuff. Yep. Making 12 bucks an hour or whatever it was. And then um, I started working my way up. I was working in service and parts body shop. I did all that, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, totally from the ground up, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, like I'm pretty good in when I get a job. I'm a, I'm usually a pretty solid employee. Sure. Unless I'm using, you know, obviously. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I know that. I know that. Right. I know that feeling. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, okay, so then what brought you out to Orange County? So, um, treatment. I went to one treatment back home. No, 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 I'm sorry. I went to well, I went to one treatment facility. I went to a couple of detoxes back home, but they're all state-run facilities. They're not like Orange County treatments are are plush. They're really nice. You okay. know, multi-million-dollar houses you live in. They give you a food cart every week. Take you food shopping. Go to the gym. You know. Sure, sure. So I came out when I came out to Orange County. I went to a 90-day program, and I did good. Um, stayed sober for probably like eight months. Okay. And then just started. Stop doing everything. Stop going to meetings. You yeah. know? Yeah. That's pretty, very, yeah. pretty typical. Hanging yeah. out with people that weren't doing the right thing. Sure. And yeah. was it still still smoking pot at the time? No. No, no. So you escalated? Yeah. But what got me... Okay, so what got me to Orange County was not pot. <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, I started using Percocets yeah. and stuff. You know, I would do coke on the weekends with my friends, drinking yeah. and stuff. Sure. Always smoking. I smoked pot for a long time, every day. Right, right. Um, and then I started experimenting with heart, heavier drugs, you know. Sure. And I started doing perk sets, and I did that for a little while. And then one day, Oxy-80s were around. This was when the Oxy's were around, and the Oxy-80s went away, you know. So we went and got heroin in, sure. in North Philly, in Kensington, because okay. you can buy it right off the corner, you know. Right, right. So... And did you start shooting it right away, or were you smoking it first? I was snorting it. Cause, snorting it? Yeah, because it's not like, back home, it's not like the, the black tar okay. out here. It's China white. So right. it's like, uh, it almost looks like a, almost looks like cocaine. It's white powder, you know? Okay, okay. It's not flaky, but um, it's good. It's strong, yeah. strong stuff. So I snorted it for like five years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Before I started shooting up. Yeah, pretty strong. Yeah, really strong. Yeah. Um, and I was selling cars at this point, so I was making a lot of money. I was living in my parents' basement. I had a nice Audi that I bought, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't really have many bills. I had my phone bill, I had my car insurance, my car payment, you know? Yeah. Did and your was, parents know that you were using? Was it obvious at, to them? At this point, they knew, you know? Um, actually, I don't know if they knew. I, they knew something was up. Sure. Because I was like falling asleep at the dinner table and nodding out, you right. know? Yeah, right. And my mom, I kind of just wrote it off that I was working long hours because I was working a lot of nine to nine selling cars, you know? If you're not there, you're not making money. It's 100% commission selling cars, you know? Oh, okay, okay. So you have to be there to make money. Right. If you were my customer and you came in. Yeah. And uh, it, Wednesday, you came on Wednesday, and that was my day to leave at five o'clock. But if you came in at four o'clock, yeah, and you wanted to look at cars till nine o'clock, I'd stay with you. You know, I would right. have to, because sure. if I, you know, if you bought a car, I needed to be there, right, to make money. Because somebody else would. Somebody else, exactly. Yeah, right. It's a very cutthroat business, you know. Yeah, of course. And then if you wanted to come in the next day with your wife to show her the car or whatever, and that was my day off, I'd have to meet you there. Sure. You know. Yeah. It's, it's a hustle. Oh yeah, no, I, I I've heard, I've heard. It's not, it's not an easy business. It's not. Yeah, my dad still does it. Yeah, he's been doing it for twenty five plus. I mean, it's years. a good living. It's yeah, just, he makes it's the just, money. It's just not a. It's just it's a. It's a tough. It's business. a hustle though. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it. For somebody like my dad, that's been doing it for so long, he has a lot of return business. So. Yeah, he's, he's after, 20, after 25 years, actually, yeah. he's, he's built up a lot of clientele. And you know how you know how the car business is. It's like uh, oh, you know, the persona about car salesman. Mm -hmm. You know, they're shysters or whatever, right. you know. So once you buy a car from somebody, you kind of have that trust. Right. So he has a lot of return customers. Sure. Obviously, you know. Yeah, that's good, though. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So, you, so you were trying to get off the heroin. So you came out to Orange County? Right. So I, I got arrested mm -hmm. um, 
on my way down to Ocean City, Maryland for family vacation. I was okay. driving my, one of my ex-girlfriend's cars. We had just got, we got pulled over. They smelled the weed, uh, whatever. And they searched the car, you know, and I had a bunch of stuff okay. at that time. I had, I had Xanax, weed, I had Molly on me. I had wow. a bunch of heroin. Yeah. So that's when my <laughs> you, parents- You were rolling up. Oh yeah, I was going down there for a week, so I had to bring them. <laughs> and bring all the whole, it's like I don't care about clothes. I just got yeah, a piece of dope. Uh, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, no, right? I, I no, I get it, man. So that's hilarious. Yeah. So when we got arrested, um, luckily my ex girlfriend at the time had some money saved. Okay. Because her dad had used her whole life, so she was homeless with that. So she mm. saved money because she never wanted to be homeless again. You know. Got it. Long story short, we got arrested. It's like one o'clock in the morning. And they take us to the county jail, and if you know we can't pay bail, we get booked in, right? So she paid both of our bails, luckily, mm -hmm. and we didn't get we didn't get booked in jail. Okay. Um, so my dad and my sister had picked me up then. I remember he was upset, um, and we went home. And then the next morning, my mom came downstairs to talk to me, you know, and she's like, "What?" What what is it like? What 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 are you what are you doing? You know, and I just told her heroin. Yeah, yeah. and I remember, like she almost fell over. You know, mm -hmm. my poor mother. She yeah, she was real upset. You know, sure, obviously because sure. she just found out. So it was a while that I was using. They knew something was up, mm -hmm. but she didn't know it was to that extent. Right, right. Obviously, yeah. You know, um, so that's at that point. I was still working at the dealership and I went to treatment. Mm -hmm. So I lost my job and all that at the dealership, you know, at that dealership. Mm -hmm. That's what I worked at for eight years. Same one my dad still works at. So um, I went to treatment the next day um, to a state-run facility. Mm -hmm. I completed the program, stayed sober for a little while, um, started smoking pot again and, mm -hmm. and drinking, you know? Sure, sure. And just led back into same old behaviors, right? You know, right. Start using hard stuff again, mm -hmm. you know. Um, after that, before I came out to California, I went and lived in Florida for two years. So I went to fl treatment in Florida. Treatment in Florida is crazy. Um, a lot of patient brokering. You get paid to go to treatment, so I figured that out. Okay. I figured out how to do that, right? So there's people in Florida that are called marketers. Okay. And they will, they'll get you into treatment, mm -hmm. right? And they'll get paid from that treatment, that treatment facility, mm -hmm. X amount of money. Say they get $5,000 per person. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll say, I'll give you two grand to go to treatment. Mm -hmm. So I started going to treatment. And then what I would do is I would go to treatments and I'd meet people at other treatments. I'm like, you wanna get paid to go to treatment. So I would take five people, whatever, with me. Mm -hmm. And I'd get paid two grand per person. And I'd be like, look, I'll give you a thousand bucks to go to treatment, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy's giving me two grand per person. So there's 10 grand right there, <laughs> well, you know? Yeah. It was so easy. Sure. And, I'm, and it was easy, dude. You go to treatment. I live there for free. They feed you. <laughs> you got right, a shelter, right, right, you know? Right. It was so easy. Wow. And I'd get out and these guys would hand you a check. Yeah. $10,000 check or whatever. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, 10,000. You know? Sure. I think the most I ever made was like almost 20,000, like 18,000. Wow. In one check. And how long was the treatment for? You'd have to go for two weeks. That's it? Yeah, 14 days. Wow. To get paid. Wow, that's crazy. So I would go to a treatment center for 14 days. <sighs> and make sure you got guys with you for 14 days. And then you walk yeah, out. Who wouldn't want to go to another? Everybody wants to. Yeah. Most no, of, you know, it. you're early sobriety. You got two weeks sober, like you're still <clears> kicking. I wonder if they're still doing it that way. I oh, they not. shut it down. Well, the feds, a lot of yeah. this, so obviously this got bad. I would imagine. Yeah, um, there's a lot of people abusing it. Of course. And there was treatment centers that were on board with all this. Oh, of course. Crooked they, treatment yeah, centers, yeah. obviously, right? Well, because they get to show numbers. Look at what we're doing. Yeah, that's, right, that's exactly. Crazy. That's crazy. And plus then, and all they're doing is they're getting paid from insurance companies, mm -hmm. you know? So they're billing your insurance, 100 grand or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know? And um, I remember when I got home from Florida, um, the insurance company that I had sent the check 
that was supposed to go to the treatment center to my house in my name. Mm. So there was a check for like $47,000 in my name. And I remember my mom got it. And I'm like <laughs> trying to think how I can get this check for my mom to go cash this thing. How much was it? It was like 47000 Wow. This was one check. Wow. There was probably 15 checks. Wow. I went to a lot of treatment centers. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> I was just and going you weren't get, and you, But you weren't getting sober. No. I wasn't planning on doing that yeah. at that time. I was, I'm like, go to treatment for two weeks, mm -hmm. you know, get paid, talk to people into going with me, you know. And Florida, there's so many treatment centers in Florida, dude. Like people think California is the mecca of treatment centers, Florida is. California's second, you know. Yeah. Florida is crazy, dude. And it's really bad. Like Delray Beach, mm -hmm. dude, you can look it up. There was a guy. It's so after you go to treatment, right? You go to the sober living. You know, I've been to sober living houses in Florida where everybody was using, mm -hmm. the house manager, everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I've been to a treatment center where I went in on my intake day and they're like, okay, like we all get high here, so you're not gonna say nothing, right? Sure. You know? So obviously sure. I just started using right away, mm -hmm. you know? I'm like, this is awesome, <laughs> you know? just free, everything's being covered by insurance, you know? Okay. And, wow. and my mom thought she was doing me a favor by purchasing an insurance policy for me. So I had PPO insurance, it was like $500 a month, right? But I could go to any treatment center I wanted. Yeah. You know, because I had, oh, I didn't have state health care. Sure. I had a private, I had private paid for insurance, you know? Mm -hmm. So I go to any treatment center I wanted, you know? Um, yeah, like I said, and they were just. So ultimately, what ended up happening? Because you ended up in Orange County. So I lived in Florida for two years, and I was just bouncing around treatment center, treatment center. So the last treatment center I went to down there, I went to like four times, and they knew what I was doing. So the one, one of the marketers that was actually like, not a scumbag marketer. There's so many of them in Florida; it's bad. Was like, dude, you're we're getting you out of Florida. So he just booked me a plane flight back to Philly, and they just took me to the airport and made sure I got on the plane, like. They had someone with the treatment center walk me, stay with me, dude, till they got me on the plane. They're like, wow. just get out of Florida. Because they, they knew, dude. I was yeah. just running, I was just running a shit show, dude. It was bad, you know? Wow, crazy. So I'm like, so they're like, they walked me, made sure I got, like I was a little kid. Yeah. <laughs> made sure I got on the plane, told the stewards, don't let him off the plane, you know? Wow. So, yeah. Crazy. Like, just get out of Florida, because you're gonna die. So, I've heard a lot of stories doing these podcasts. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Dude. Wow, what a hustle. So then I... Don't do this at home, kids. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, this is, don't, don't, don't go this. to Florida and do this. Please don't. don't. <laughs> Anybody who watches this... is <laughs> bad. Don't well, they go there. can't. It, it's not like they're really... No, I know. I know. I the know. Feds, just... <laughs> the feds started... So the feds started going to these treatment centers mm -hmm. like they were patients and just busting them. Oh, I bet. You I know? bet. Well, after a while, because it's all federal money, I'm sure. Of course. Right. So, okay, so you go back to Philly. Go back to Philly for a couple weeks. And then... And, and then, I'm using. Using. You know, because I left Florida. <clears throat> okay. Using. And then, and then you end up in Orange County? I went to... So in Philly, you know, obviously I couldn't go back to my house because my parents had enough of my shit, you know? Right. And, and that's why, like, I think me leaving Philadelphia was, was kind of good for them because it was like, in a way, I was out of, their, out, of their, out of their life a little bit, you know? Sure. Like, they just weren't seeing me every day. I was living in a different state, obviously. Um, so I think it was a little bit easier for them, probably, you know, um, in a way. But anyway, so I go back to Philly for a couple weeks and I'm living in South Philadelphia um, in recovery homes. Mm -hmm. And um, I start using again. And the, the, the guy that owns the recovery homes in South Philly was like, you know, you wanna go to California. And I knew someone that was working at this treatment center um, so I talked to him and he was like, yeah, come out here, dude. Uh, you know, cause I knew how he used to run around back in Philly and he was just as bad as I was, you know? And, um, I, I just, he's like, I got two years clean. I, I, you know, I got an apartment, I'm making money, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm doing good, you know? So I ended up going out there and he was working at the treatment center I went to, um, so, uh, I went there for 90 days and 
I got in great shape. Like, I went to the gym every day, dude, you know? Um, I had fun. I, I enjoyed that treatment center. It was nice. Okay. Multi-million dollar house. Dude, it was so nice, you know? Right. So that was cool. Then I got hooked up with some people in California doing the same thing I was doing in Florida. Mm. Yeah. So I did that for a little bit. Okay. You know? Okay. So I started doing the same thing, obviously, because it was such easy money. Yeah. You know? So bad. So bad. Okay. Oh, so they were doing that out here in California? Man, I never even heard about this stuff. Dude. Crazy. How long ago was this? Five years ago. Wow. Yeah, it's not like it was. I mean, you can, I still know people, and you can still get, you can still do it. It's not nearly as much money. They don't, they don't pay these marketers out nearly as much money as they used to. When I was out here, I knew a guy that was going to pay $10,000 a client, and he would give me $5,000 a client out here. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Anyway, that's that's crazy. Anybody, anybody, so anybody doing that needs to stop. Yes, yeah, because, it, because to stop. it makes it makes it really hard for folks like us that are trying to get people really sober. Yeah. So anyway, I, I, I digress. But so okay, so you you're, you're hustling in the in the in the recovery. Obviously, you're not staying sober. No. Right. Obviously. So so what ends up happening? So where do you go from there? So then. After that, I went to another treatment center, and I wanted to try to get sober. Mm -hmm. So, I had the offer to get paid to go, and I didn't. I went to the treatment center, but I didn't get paid. Because I knew, if I'm doing that, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not getting sober, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I went, and I, um, I completed, and... Um, I went to the sober living and I stayed there for a while and I started doing good for a while. And then, and then I started not doing good, started doing the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why the past five years I've been using, mm -hmm. you know, running around LA okay. area. Sure. Um, heroin. Heroin. Okay. Yeah. Speed. Speed. Yeah. Oh, so everything, basically. Everything. A anything and everything, right? Yeah, you were kind of like me. I'd, yeah. I never did heroin. But yeah. I, but I, but I, but, but outside of heroin, I, I would do anything that was put in front of me. If it made me different, yeah. feel different, I would do it. Yeah. So I, I get that. Of course. Meth was my drug of choice. Right. But if I didn't have it and you had something else, I didn't care. As long as I right. could just feel different. Yeah, right. Of course. As long as you get out of yourself. Yeah. Right? Um, that's why I like working with Danny every day, too, because... Helping people gets me out of myself. You know, yeah. I'm not. I'm not sitting there being selfish and thinking <clears throat> about myself. Yeah. I'm so trying to help somebody. So without, like, without, obviously, without divulging um, who and how, um, because I don't want. I want to respect the person's privacy. But so, Danny, our outreach leader, knows somebody in LA that you were connected with. Yeah. Goes down to LA, grabs the both of you. Brings you up here, right? To to try to do treatment, right? Um, and as 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 we know, and well, our audience doesn't know, but as I, you and I both know, that um, you're sober right now. How, how much time do you have? Uh, August eighteenth. August eighteenth. Yeah. And I, I say sober, but you're still yeah. You're on methadone, right? Right. But we're working on that's yeah. that's the next step. That's the next step. Next step. Um, but you're doing great. Yeah, I'm not yeah. happy about them being on it. I don't want them to be on it, but it's it. I'm not doing what I was doing. No, no, no. I get you know? it. No, I get so, it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I've I've gotten to know you. I, I you're not. I know you're not hustling. So yeah. I mean, there's nothing to hustle. Street Life Ministries doesn't pay clients. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm no. in a good spot. I like. I like. <laughs> Just kidding. I like. I, I like. Um, I like what you guys do. You yeah. Know? Um. So uh, you know, as 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 you know, your girl, your girlfriend who you were with, she's made a decision to continue to stay out there. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, you're going to El Central. Yep. Here in Redwood City, and um, so talk about that a little bit. How, how's that going? It's going good. I actually have uh, a Zoom group today. A group today. Six o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and that seems to be that seems to be working better, huh? I feel like I feel like for you going through all the different rehabs. Yeah. Where you're kind of left up to your own, yeah. That's where you kind of spin out. So this here, you're you're serving in the ministry, yeah. Doing outreach with Danny, and you're doing treatment, outpatient treatment. And that's going pretty well. Yeah. So it is. so let me ask you. Uh, so Philly, Florida, back to Philly, then to Orange County. 
finding a niche in how to hustle recovery programs, but and all along not staying sober, um, and then going from L.A. area, Orange County or whatever, up to Redwood City. Yeah. And now you're, from what I can tell, 100% into staying sober. Yeah. Because that's what I see every day. Because I, I see you almost every day. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and you're doing a tremendous... I. See, see you doing a tremendous amount of recovery. What was the, what was the turning point for you? What, what made you say, okay, Anthony's done. I'm, I'm not going back. What, what, what finally clicked for you? I don't know. I, I mean, I know it's been a while that I, I've been wanting to get sober. Mm -hmm. You know, getting wanting to and doing it two different things, mm -hmm. right? But um, it's been. I don't know. It's been a little while. I, I just, I miss my family, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you talk to them? Every day. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. talk to them. At least text messages yeah. pretty much every day. You know? Okay, good. Uh, both my parents, my sisters, mm -hmm. you know? My one sister, um, 15 years in a week between me and my youngest sister. Okay. So we never really had much of a relationship, Yeah. you know? I'm just way older. My other sister, I'm two years older than her, so... She has two kids and a husband, house and everything. Okay. You know, jobs and stuff. Okay. So normal stuff. Cool. <laughs> cool. But um, so we talk, we get along. Um, but I don't know. I um, I'm just tired of doing the same old crap. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and hey, hey, they say you have to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah, they right. do. So it's true. You know. Um. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to say anything. Like, I don't want to have a bunch of AA people jumping down my throat and saying, hey, I'm not going to ever use again because we know in, yeah. in the rooms that that's, we don't say that. It's right. one day at a time. Right. Um, but you feel pretty confident? Yeah. This time? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, what do you, I know, I know you have a relationship with the Lord. Of course, yeah. So is that, is that, do you feel like your relationship with Jesus has gotten stronger? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I pray every night and every morning, okay. you know. Okay. Um, so I like church that we go to, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's Rick, not real big either, yeah, which is Rick, cool. Rick and Craig are all right. Yeah, I like them guys. They're yeah, they're, they're all right. They're all right. <laughs> no, Rick, they, he does they, really... they watch this podcast, so I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to give, you know, ego. <laughs> he does a really good job, Yeah, Rick, too. I like I like his message, you know? Yeah. He does a good job. Yeah. Um, I like that it, the church isn't huge. Sure. You know? Yeah. So. Right. Right. Absolutely. I mean, like Calvary back home, where my parents go to, it's huge, dude. It's cool though. That's cool. You know. Yeah. Some of the Cal it's, a lot of the Calvaries are like that. It's just a little bit more personable. Sure. The church we go to. Okay. You know. Yeah. I, oh, I totally know. I go to it. So. Yeah, I, totally <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you yeah, know, you can you know everybody in there. Mm -hmm. Even I pretty much know everybody in there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it, I don't know. It's cool. Cool. So um, usually, usually when we kind of wind down to an end i usually ask people um is there any is there any advice that you could give anybody that is that may listen to this podcast or watch the youtube that may be struggling i would say um you know obviously just get involved in aa for sure you know get a sponsor do all the stuff that you don't want to do that they tell you to you know you got to get uncomfortable Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing for me, too, is God, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you got to have a relationship with God. Sure. You know? Sure. You know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Every day. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I couldn't do it if it wasn't for God. Right. Yeah. And, uh, like, when I pray, I just ask God to guide my day, you mm -hmm. know? Help me to make the right decisions and, and to stay out of my own way. Cause right. I get in trouble when I do my own things. Yeah, that's for sure, man. I, I definitely skid out of control when I get in yeah. my own way. It's crazy. So yeah, I definitely, you know, try to serve God every day, dude. You know, sure. That's I think the biggest thing for me right now. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, your stories, your story is really cool. That's yeah. that's wild. I, that's yeah. really wild. I got man. a lot of wild stories, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. What's it was like? Is there anything like? What's one of your crazy? What's one of like a crazy story that you could share? Just as we end, anything crazy that you could think of? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, I uh, when I was 
back home in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia's crazy, bro. Kensington's really bad right now. Okay. If you look it up, look up Kensington on YouTube and stuff. Okay. It's bad. Bad um, in what way? Like gang, gangbangers or? Yeah, they don't have gangs like they do out here. Yeah. But they like, you know, it's like whatever neighborhood they're from, they kind of rep their neighborhoods or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Or their block. Okay. So, but in Philadelphia, it's all open air drug market. It's the biggest open air drug market in the country. So there's hundreds of drug blocks. And they all stand out in the corner. They'll be like, yo, white boy, don't rock powder. You know? Yeah. Um, they see you driving. They know what, there's no white people that live there. Okay. It's all, you know, black, Puerto Rican, you know. Sure. Whatever. Sure. You know, Dominicans. Yeah. Um, so, and there's tons of drug blocks. Like, even the cops, if they pull you over down there, they're like, what are you doing? You know, and I, I learned how to deal with them. Like, I'm trying to cop. You know, I'm trying to pick up. The cops, you tell them that, you know, because they know what you're doing in North Philly. Right. You know, um, the North Philly cops are, they're pretty gangster, dude. They're all tatted up. Nobody wants to be a North Philly cop, you know? Yeah. I mean, not too long ago, they had a big shootout. Like, they were serving drug warrants at this house, and they kicked in this door, and these dudes just picked up assault rifles and started dumping on the cops. You know, wow. seven cops got shot. That wow. Day. Yeah. So they had a big SWAT shootout. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy down there. But um, wow. I've seen people froze to the ground in the winter. Oh, because of the cold? Yeah. Really froze to the ground? Dead. Wow. That And they were just, they probably just got overdosed or whatever? Or? Yeah, died through the night and just... Dude. Bad. That's crazy. Frozen to the ground? Yeah, dead, so... Holy cow. Wow, like, you you know, the, you, know yeah, you don't see stuff like that in California. No. I mean, I've seen some pretty crazy stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. Know, but, but, of course. But so now, yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. It was pretty bad, dude. That's pretty wild. Yeah. I mean, it gets below freezing. Sure. In sure. Winter. Yeah, and then you're a dope fiend, you're a dope fiend. You're out looking, it doesn't matter what, yeah, I... I you yeah. fall asleep, you know, anyway, on the storefronts or whatever. Yeah, I tell you what, man, if, when I was when I was out there ripping and warm, man, I'd, I'd walk barefoot 50 yeah. miles in the to snow get you, for, to, to get, get my sack. job if yeah, I knew of it. Course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, 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 it's sick, but it, it's sad. It's sick. I mean, today, that, how, today I look at it, I can laugh at it because right. it's like I, Which I, is I, cool. I, I'm on the other side of it. But man, that was Absolutely. what a disgusting lifestyle, dude. It's so bad. Yeah, I wake up every day and 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 I say to Danny too, like I'm like, dude, I'm so glad that we're not. Yeah, like yeah. I had a dream the other night that I told I told Danny that that I used in my dream, and mm -hmm. I woke up like freaking out. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, thank God that like yeah, you know. Oh, I've had those. I don't have. I mean, I'm 17 years sober. I don't have them anymore. But I've had. But in the beginning, of course, first couple of years. Oh my gosh, I had some Gnarly. crazy user dreams. Crazy dreams. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's the stuff, and it's real. It's real. Like I woke up thinking I was in a hotel room. Me too. And yeah. I wake up and I'm I'm not. You're like thank God. Next, <laughs> next to your wife, you know. Yeah. Like grab grab your wife. Like thank God. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like you look over and go, Oh my gosh, I'm in my house. Yeah. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Right? You know. That's cool. You have a house. You yeah, know, so right. Stuff you wouldn't have if you were. I'd be dead right now. Yeah. There's, uh, the way I was going? Right. So for me, I, I, I know you, you're, you've you just recently quit, but like, for, I, but for me, I'm, I'm so grateful that I quit before fentanyl Dude. came out because I, that's I, would, I, would have, I would have accidentally hit that stuff. And, I and they're putting it in the speed, too. They're dude. putting it in everything. It's crazy. It's in soda. It, I mean, I'm surprised. That, you know, like, yeah. If you go to a dope house, it's in everything. It's Oh, dude. It's crazy. It's it drop. I know friends of mine that are that are police officers, that dr and they go into drug houses, that they drop. That's Because it's in the air. Crazy. I know. It's, it's, it's I've seen stuff like that insane. on YouTube. Cops searching cars and they're overdosing. Yep. Yeah. yeah they get, that's why they got Narcan. I know. You know, the Narcan really came out not for the person that was using drugs. It was for the police because they were getting, they were overdosing. I know. It's incredible. It's, yeah, it's accidental it's, overdoses, dude. It's insane. It's just because so. it's in the air. How crazy is that? Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> know. And it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. It's a little much. particles. Can I've seen, drop you down. I, I've brought back so many people, dude. When that stuff first came, came to, when that stuff first hit the streets mm -hmm. out here, it was so bad. People would hit it one time and turn purple. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, we're working with people right now. You and Danny are running around with people I that know. are just, I know, they're just using it like it's dude, regular dope. I was using it like it was, I was doing that stuff like I was eating Skittles, dude. Yeah. It's crazy. It is. To think like, I talked to Danny about it and I'm like, dude, I don't even know how I could ingest as much fentanyl as I was. Right.
and I'm okay. Well, I tell you what, the longer you stay sober, and then once you get off the methadone and you're and you're completely like clean, your body starts to repair itself in such a yeah. way that you, you can't. Like I, no. I couldn't go back out right now. No way. I would die. Yeah. I couldn't use I definitely couldn't use the, the level that I was using when I was No way. I would instantly be dead. So And obviously you build up a tolerance, you know, over time. Well that's the whole thing. It's it's an opiate. Yeah. That's why people don't realize like No, yeah, it's an opiate. Pills yeah. pills the, the you know, you, one day you take two two codeines and the next thing you know you're taking a fistful of them. Yeah. Because you're opiate, you like, just get used to it. It's like math, you build math a the same thing. Oh, yeah. I got used to it, and I just, yeah. I, I remember, I remember when, the first time I started slamming meth, I couldn't eat for days. Yeah, then, then you could slam and eat at the same time. I go to the and store, sleep. I go to the fast food and get a couple of cheeseburgers. And fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's You'd be bad. up for days before. It, it, just defe- it defeats the purpose. It was like, I wasn't getting high. I was just doing it because of my body. It was like. You were maintaining, yeah. You were just maintaining. Cool, man. Well, thank you, Anthony. Thank you. So I, you know what I would like to do, if you don't mind? Like, I'd like to do a part two. Yeah. So once you get off the methadone we'll do it again. and get, and get, get like, maybe six or eight months sober clear. and do another one? Cool. That'd be really cool just that to see, cool. see your journey. Yeah. All right? I'm, I'm down, dude. Cool. Thanks, Thank you man. for everything. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. I appreciate you.